Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. One of the tests that we do on all the new patients that come here is called an upright cone beam CT scan. And I just thought it'd be fun just to show some of the, some of the upright cone beam CT scans that we've seen. Some people might say, well, doc, isn't it overkill, man? You just do so many tests. You know, like we do so many tests on the initial evaluation of patients. And the reason why I do that is you always got to remember Caring Medical and the Hauser Neck Center is almost always the doctor of last resort, you know, especially for the complicated neck patients. Do you realize the average person that I see has on average 10 significant symptoms? Like we're not just talking one symptom, it's 10 significant symptoms. And often they've seen a whole bunch of people. I had one person tell me, Doc, you're the 109th physician, like not just like healthcare providers, like 109th physician. You know, so over, and, I, and sometimes I'll have to tell people, you gotta realize this thing developed over my, th I, I w became a doctor in 1988, uh, and so now it's 2024, you know, when I'm making this video. So th this stuff is developed over 36 years, right? Back in the day, I was a traditional natural medicine doctor, right? I did, uh, I was one of the first doctors that was involved in Cure Autism Now, so I saw a lot of autistic kids. I was one of the first doctors that did the whole mold treatment. We had a charity clinic on a Lyme disease belt. We had a full IV center. The very first patient treated with insulin potentiation therapy in the United States was a patient at Caring Medical. You know, so, so basically we had a cancer center. So back in my history of being a doctor, I did many of the things that holistic doctors do. And it helps a lot of people. It, quote unquote, resolves a lot of symptoms. But always remember, by the time somebody comes to Caring Medical or to the Hauser Neck Center, they've done a lot of that, or they've done almost all of that. So, the, so basically, I got into, starting in about 2007, so 17 years ago, started to realize the major issue with people was really structural. And you might say, well, come on, why was that? Well, realize the iPhone started in the year 2000, right? So starting with the year 2000, all of us, if we're honest, we started getting our cell phone addiction. So it took basically some years to have s such a change in the neck structure that the neurology of the body was just getting screwed up, the neurology of the body. We're all familiar with blood flow, right? Blood flow to an organ, right? You have to have good blood flow. Well, you got to realize when the neurology of the body screwed up, it's, it does the same thing as a uh, bad blood flow. Like I've been called by people who have like a child, like there was one patient that called me that the child is in the hospital and they have pancreas atrophy. Like in other words, they're probably gonna die if the pancreas doesn't start working because it's getting all atrophied. And I help the mother figure out what neck position the child needs to be in in the bed to get the vagus nerve better better nerve supply to the pancreas and sure enough like within a couple of days of changing the posture of the child's on the bed the pancreas started working i mean that's just like an extreme example but this stuff is serious so there's certain things that the upright cone beam ct scan can show that an that basically x-rays or this or that don't show as good so that's kind of what i want to uh, go over. So this is the upright comb beam CT scan. That's a person that looks like me. So this is like a patient who had Chiari surgery. Like what does it look like? And obviously the person's still seeing me even though they got Chiari. So 
If you've had a surgery of your neck and you still have symptoms, there's probably something else going on. But this is, you know, they had a craniectomy, they had a fusion, there's this, the, the sutures or the staples, and that's kind of what it looks like. So, you know, you could see the hole there that gave it more room. But the problem is once you get a surgery, a fusion of the neck, you're likely going to get instability above and below the fusion. And that's what happened with that patient. Snoring, sleep apnea, right? Obviously, they're, like a CPAP machine helps a lot of people. But again, why do you need a CPAP machine? Like why is the air not getting into the lungs, right? Your CPAP means you have to use continuously positive pressure to get the air into the lungs. Well, maybe it's like this. Do you think that's gonna be a problem? Like see where the tongue is? So there's a TMJ specialist or dentist that specialize in oral airways. So one of the ways that the oral airways help a lot is the person wears something that pushes the tongue there. But it's like, notice that the atlas, the C1, is so close to here. So what we find is that if you just correct the neck curve, often this airway opens up, and when the airway opens up, the sleep apnea can resolve or get a lot better, and the snoring can get a lot better or resolve. So I'm not saying all uh, sleep apnea issues are related to the neck, but if you're normal weight, like your normal weight, and you have tension in your neck, you have clicking, popping, grinding in your neck, it's likely you probably have ligamentous cervical instability. The atlas is going forward, the C2 is going forward, there's the dens, and it's causing obstruction of your airway. Okay, again, look at this patient, right? Look at that, like trying to get air through there. So obviously if the person lays on their back, the tongue's just gonna block it all off, then they're gonna get non-restful sleep. So if you're somebody who has non-restful sleep, especially if you have neck issues, it's likely the cause of the thing is related to your neck. So, you know, and then this is kind of what it looks like. That's what it kind of looks like, it's so narrowed. I just have this on here just to show how close the TMJ is to your hearing nerve, to your balanced nerve. So the semicircular canals is the bony encasement of the cochlear vestibular nerve, which is cranial nerve eight. So somebody who's been told they have cervicogenic dizziness or they have Meniere's disease, uh, it can be from a TMJ problem or a cervical neck problem. And we see a lot in the office of jugular bulb problems, meaning that if you have a block of your jugular vein because of ligamentous cervical instability, the pressure is going to back up. So when the pressure backs up, fluid flow gets disrupted in the semicircular canal. So the semicircular canals job is to let your brain know, hey, my head's tilted to the left, my head's back. So imagine if the fluid flow in these circular canals is interrupted, it's stopped, it's inhibited, all of a sudden you turn your head and you're like, oh my God, the, my blurry, my vision's getting blurry, I'm getting dizzy, right? There's just a lot of people with dizziness of unknown cause, and it can be because of ligamentous injury of the neck or TMJ. If you have popping, clicking of the jaw, and you have some kind of unusual symptom, the treatment may be as simple as just doing prolotherapy to tighten the TMJ or prolotherapy of the neck. Okay, we obviously can see deviated septums. So you can see deviated symptoms. You can also see in the sinus cavities, polyps, you can see sinusitis. With the cone beam, we can do a lot of intricate measurements. So how's the neck structure? How's the jaw structure? How's the relationship between the jaw and the neck? You can see where in this patient, the jaw subluxed, right? So the the mandible is subluxed out of the 
temple mandibular joint here. And obviously this person has a lot of ligament damage in the jaw. I know there's times where somebody needs jaw surgery, but obviously I see a lot of people who after jaw surgery, they're still having a lot of issues. So I always feel like a person should get a consult by a conservative doctor, especially one that does prolotherapy before signing up for a surgery for a chronic symptom. You know, there obviously are people where the jaw is dislocated, right? And there just is extensive damage. And they, you know, like there's, there, there's emergencies. But if you have a chronic symptom, like you have chronic neck pain, you have chronic jaw pain, you have chronic dizziness, this or that, you know, I think getting an evaluation by somebody who's an expert in prolotherapy is a good idea. And then we can look at with a cone beam, we can have the person, like we can do a cone beam in the neutral position. Like in this particular person, that's Izzy. She's putting her jaw forward. And then we can look at all the anatomy with her having her jaw forward. Or we can have the person turn their head to the side and see if one of the nerves is getting pinched or the space is getting narrowed. This one, you could see there's a humongous bone spur here. See this humongous bone spur right here. See this like beak? Well, the jugular vein and the vagus nerve run right there. So that beak could be the cause of uh, the person having vagus nerve degeneration. Then you get cool pictures. That's me. Like that's what I look like on the inside. And the Bible says that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the inside. So that's, uh, that's my inside. And then this is my cone beam. You can see I have a right. You, occasionally I'll talk about that. I have a right styloid. So my right styloid looks like it's about 28 millimeters. And at the time that I did this cone beam, I had some upper cervical instability. And I found this clinic down in Fort Myers, Florida called Caring Medical. And I saw this amazing prolotherapist by the name of Danielle Matis. And she was amazing. And apparently she's the associate of Dr. Hauser, who, has, who I hear some good things about too. And then here, let's see, oh, the, it's rotated. So this, oh, it's C2 is rotated to the right. I mean, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically you can see various rotations of vertebrae. So how this is helpful is if a person, say, has blocked jugular vein on one side, but the other side's open, you're trying to figure out, well, why is the jugular vein blocked on the, on the right side? Is it because of the styloid? Is it because of instability or is it because there's a vertebrae that's massively rotated to one side? So somebody who has a massively rotated vertebrae on one side, it may just be simply that they need to get an adjustment. Now often people come here having already done a bunch of upper cervical adjustments. So normally the process is they have significant ligamentous cervical instability. And then what we can do is we can, the cone beam can also be used to document instabilities. And one of the instabilities that's very hard to document is C0, C1 instability. And then you see here where the person has the styloid right next to the atlas. So the jugular vein could be getting compressed right there. And then this is kind of how we use it. This is the cervical digital motion x-ray. We do ultrasounds of the carotid sheath. We do upright cone beam. This is kind of complicated, but it shows you what normally are the problems. So the structural problems normally are one of five different problems. Breakdown of the cervical curve. There's subluxation or mandibular malposition. There's an elongated styloid. There's lower or upper cervical instability. Then we try to correlate that with the pathophysiology that we find with what we call neck vitals analysis. So we do eye pressures, optic nerve sheath diameter. We look at the heart rate variability. We see if there's vagus nerve degeneration is there blood flow issues into or out of the brain? And what are the eye pressures? And we put that all together to come up with what we term the primary structural lesion. Because 
if you correct a primary structural lesion and that's causing all this bad physiology causing symptoms, you have a chance of actually resolving the condition. So whatever symptom you have, if you have a chronic symptom and you're wondering, could it be related to a neck problem? Well, do you have clicking, popping, grinding sensations in your neck or your jaw, right? Could be a jaw problem. Do you have neck pain or facial pain or jaw pain? Are you a bruxer? Do you have sensitivity in your teeth? Do you wake up with facial pain? Or do you have a lot of other symptoms that are common with ligamentous cervical instability, such as bloating, digestive problems, tachycardia, stress is getting to you more than it normally does, brain fog, migraine headaches. And if you do a good structural analysis of the neck, should be done, which in our office involves a digital motion x-ray, which is a motion picture of the neck with various neck motions and an upright comb beam CT scan.